Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, my social thread. My name's Crystal and today is another Friday Sews vlog for you where I will be talking about everything that I have been up to sewing wise over the past two weeks. So first and foremost, I will start with what I'm wearing. It's just a Tilly and the Buttons Billy Jumper, which you've all seen before if you do follow me. Um, and then the next thing I will show you are my makes. So um, I have been quite busy, although I can't show all of my makes, unfortunately, uh, this week because one of them is a, a blogger project for Jenny Stitches Fabrics um, and that was a beautiful by hand London Hannah dress which I will show you the pattern it's the by hand London Hannah dress and I've made it in a pretty and pink viscose um, that blog post will be released on the 12th of June uh, and so what I'm planning to do is I will do my roundup or um, March, April, what is it? April makes uh, vlog on that day and I will include that make in there for the roundup of everything that I've done in April. Um, and I will release that once Jenny has released the blog on the 12th of June. So that's um, the first make that I've made, which I can't show you unfortunately. Uh, the second thing that I made um, over the past two weeks is my dress over here. Here she is. This is the Style Arc um, Bell dress. And I will show you the pattern here. Um, and it comes in two versions. Well, it's actually the same dress, but different sleeve versions. So you've got the same length sleeve, but with gathering sort of midway to give that poof effect. Or then you've just got the sleeve with the elasticated cuffs at the bottom. Um, and it's a beautiful... I'm not sure what these um, kind of um, bodices are called, but it's basically got gather gathering under the bust, which is so simple and it just provides such lovely shaping to the bodice. Uh, you've got a front yoke and a back yoke. You've got sort of this really nice um, shaped waistband, buttons all the way down. It's got pockets and at the back it has um, shearing at the back as well for a good fit. Um, so that's that. Um, so this is the dress. I have made this in the, in um, I believe it's a Visco Shelly um, in their hydrangea print from Lady McElroy. It's a coral background um, with sort of orange hydrangeas and different coloured green leaves with some orange, um, what are these called? Like flat pearlized buttons that I just got from eBay in orange. Um, and I love it. I love this dress. I basically, the by hand London dress that I made for Jenny Stitches, I was going to wear that to a recent family wedding. And then I made this dress afterwards and I liked it so much, I decided to wear this dress instead for the wedding. Um, so <laughs> that's what I wore. I will pop up some pictures of me wearing it, not at the wedding, but just pictures of me wearing it up here. And what can I say? I really, really love the dress. My favourite thing ever are these sleeves. Um, it's got lovely gathering at the top here, which um, if you follow me, you know that I'll love, that I love. It's got sort of like billowy sleeves um, and it's just sort of below the elbow, which is quite nice. And then it's an elasticated um, hem. Um, what else do I love? I love, as I say, the gathering under the bust here. So it's such a simple technique. It simply is just gathering stitches underneath and it gives such a lovely shape. Obviously, the mannequin doesn't have a bust as such. So with a the bust there, that would be more sort of um, shape, shape to your bust, which is lovely. I like this waistband as well, the way it goes um, thicker at the middle and then it narrows towards the end. And it gives you a lovely illusion of a lovely, um, a lovely trim waist, in my opinion. And it sort of flattens the area as well, which is quite nice. Um, the skirt is gathered at the front and the back. It has pockets. It has pockets. Um, and it's a real a button placket all the way down. Um, it's got some facings here as well for extra strength uh, with, for the button placket. Um, gathered yokes here. And then the yoke continues all the way around the back. It's actually not a double yoke. It's a one-piece yoke that goes um, the back and to the front. Gathering at the back here. And then at the waistband of the back, it's sheared. sheared. Now, I had a very difficult time shearing this. I don't know why. I watched lots of tutorials and basically in order to get this, and I was I was um, sewing it and the fabric wasn't shearing at all. So I thought, let me iron it or let me steam it as they do to, to make the shear, to make the elastic shrink so that the shearing effect is more pronounced. And it wasn't shearing at all. So what I had to do, I think I tried about 
10 times with all different settings on my faf sewing machine um and i just wasn't having any luck and i was doing that on scrap fabric and then i decided to just give it a go on the actual piece that i needed and it worked perfectly but then that was having tested all the settings and i finally came up with a, a setting that worked and then that piece was sheared um and then that just gets inserted here um in hindsight um, I think if I was to make another dress, which I am definitely going to make another dress, another version of this, I might not put the shearing in it because for me as it stands, when I wear it, the shearing is at its um, widest length anyway, so it doesn't really benefit the shearing doesn't really i don't benefit from the shearing at all so i might just put a flat waistband the same as this but without the so it's just the same that the same width all the way round um and i think um that would i would like that better but i would still keep the gathering here um what else can I say? So as I say, I really, really do love this dress. And um, the mistakes that I made, or quite a few actually, because the instructions for Stylark is very, very sparse. Um, I will show you the instructions. It literally is one sheet there and one sheet there, and that's the full instructions. So it doesn't tell you to finish your seams in any part of the instructions. It doesn't tell you how to attach this on the ins on the outside and the inside, so it's all enclosed, so I had to figure that out myself. Um, it doesn't tell you how to do the burrito yoke method, so I had to Google So Essential on YouTube to find out how to do the burrito method, which actually is quite simple once you know how to do it. Um, and basically what I plan to do, because I am going to make another one, I will have a look at these instructions again and basically rewrite it all out myself the way how I did it and so that I can remember a proper way to do it where um, it prompts you where to finish um, certain um, seams and things and how to insert the yokes and how to insert the waistbands, all that sort of thing. So I'm just basically going to rewrite the instructions for this myself for my other version. The other version I wanted to make, let me just get this fabric out is ah sorry this is the double gauze mustard double gauze from sew me sunshine which i bought a couple of months ago and it's the big check on one side and the uh, smaller check on the other side and it's a double gauze so it's two layers of cotton fabric uh, stitched randomly together um, and it's beautifully beautifully soft perfect for the summer and i'm going to make another bell dress hopefully for this month um <laughs> we'll see and basically what i plan to do is um for the whole dress um i will use the big check for the skirt the bodice and the sleeves but then for the waistband and the yokes and uh the um the sides of the bodice is here i am going to use the smaller check and i think that will look quite nice because the smaller check will sort of especially at the waist it will sort of make that part look slimmer i think and also the yoke i think it's just an extra detail uh to um an extra nice piece of detail in a dress um and it's just something different um bearing in mind this dress actually this wasn't i wasn't originally going to go for this dress but that was recommended to me by sarah bailey uh who's a super bales on instagram i can't find the other pattern now and originally oh here it is the pattern I did buy that I really, really liked the look of was this Vogue 907, 9076. And as you can see, it's very similar. It has this um, sort of lovely waistband detail. It has the gathering under the bust and it has the yoke and the bodice side bits here. It even has the poofy sleeves and that one's got a cuff actually. The only thing this thing has are the collars here, which, this, which the Stylark Bell doesn't have. Um, so I was planning to make this dress, but as you know, if you do follow me, I do try to stay away from the big four patterns because I don't think their instructions are very good. And also the sizing, I, I just don't, I'm not very confident in them. And when Sarah Bailey suggested this as part of our collaboration, I just went ahead and, and went for it. And it was a, a really good sew, despite the lack of instructions. I really actually enjoyed it. Uh, Sarah Bailey does have her one. She do, she's not on YouTube, but she's on Instagram. I will post, um, I will put the description, the link to her Instagram in the description box below. But she's made a lovely version as well. Um, so you should check that out. Um, so that's the Belle Style Up Belle dress. 
which is lovely. I went also, because I used the Lady McElroy fabric, um, when I posted it on Instagram, I used the hashtag for Stylark, for Lady McElroy, and they have a monthly competition. I don't know if you know. Uh, you just type in Lady McElroy fabrics and Lady McElroy competition, and once a month, they will choose a Make of the Month winner, and that winner will win three metres of fabric of their choice, which is amazing. Um, now, um, I didn't think... I think I posted this on the 31st as well, of May, April, May, yeah, of May, um, and I wasn't thinking anything of it, um, and then I got an email, um, a direct message on Instagram from Lady McElroy, saying, congratulations, you've won 25% discount, um, and that was it, and then I, I email, I messaged them back saying, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't aware that there was, I, th I was only aware of the competition where you win three metres of fabric for make of the month, and they said that um, I wasn't the winner. <laughs> so the winner did win three metres of fabric. Um, I'll post up a picture here. Uh, but I was one of the runner-ups. And the runner-ups get a 25% discount of fabric. Um, so I was super excited about that. Um, the only downside, really, is when they posted my photo, my head was cut off. I mean, I guess my head's not that important. They're obviously trying to advertise their fabric. Uh, but my dress was in full. You could see my full dress. Um, and I was on their um, Instagram page, just having one as one of the run rocks, which is, I'm, I'm really happy about that. So I went onto their website, of course, and I have already spent my 25% discount. And I bought... I haven't got it yet, but I do have... Oh, here. This, I believe, is a Visco Chalet or a Cotton Lawn. I'm really confused with Lady McElroy. They have so many different bases, and they have Visco Chalets, Marley Lawns. They have loads of different types of lawns and bases, but I think it's kind of a viscose or a lawn. It's a hydrangea print again, but look how gorgeous that is. It's sort of greens with pinks, and oh, it's just lovely. Look at that beautiful drape anyway i had two meters of this which i bought as a remnant with during one of their sales and then when i looked on the lady McElroy website they had 2.1 meters as a remnant so it was slightly cheaper than what you would normally buy and then i used my 25 percent discount on that and i got another 2.1 meters for like 25 pounds just really amazing so now i've got four meters of this and i can make a, a really nice sort of flowy dress uh, i normally buy three meters for a dress but where it's either a longer length or where you have the poofy sleeves it does require a lot more fabric uh, especially if you want to pattern match so I think four meters of that gives me a lot of choice for what I can do with that. Sorry, I think I've kind of gone off on a bit of a tangent. So that's the bell woven dress. Uh, yes. And then the other thing that I made was another sage brush top, which is over here. And it's in the same uh, leftover fabric, the Lady McElroy Hydrangea. Um, and I... Uh, for those of you who have seen my last vlog, I do really like the sage brush top, and this is my second version. Sorry, the pattern is over here. Friday Pattern Company sage brush top, and um, the only thing that I didn't like about the sage brush top was the way they finish the neckline. They tell you to use a bias binding over here, and that in turn becomes the tie at the back. I'm not that keen on that finish and actually I, I, I veered from the instructions anyway because the bias binding is supposed to kind of fold over the back and the front and you can see it on the outside. What I did is I folded mine fully in uh, so you couldn't see it but of course with the top stitching it looks like you've got the bias binding there anyway. So for this version, my next version, I did, um, are they called facings? Like a lining, so the back, the front yoke and the back two yokes here, I did um, a lining. So all I did basically was um, cut them twice. So I cut these two pieces and then another two pieces for the for the lining. And then this front yoke and then another matching front yoke for the lining. And for the ties, I just added shorter ties um, at the end. At the end there. Um, and I did it that way. So I was going to do the burrito method. Um, and I was happily on my way to constructing the burrito method for the front yoke and then I realized actually the back yoke would need a burrito method as well because they're they're both yokes and I couldn't figure out how to do a double burrito method yoke um, so I contacted um, Jen Leg of Jen Leg Tees Creative because I know she does a lot of these sage brush tops and she does the lined um, the lined uh, yokes as well 
and she said that she would do a tutorial or she has a tutorial on Minerva about it so I was going to search for that and then in the end she said actually you don't need to do a burrito um, method you can just do a normal lining where you um, attach the front yoke and the back yoke outer pieces together and then you attack do the same for the lining and then you just put one on top of the other and sew around the neckline and the armholes uh, the only downside to that is that the inside isn't fully enclosed so I'll show you um, for this version ah Ah, no, so it's fine. So with a with a yolk with a burrito method, do I have one in here? With a burrito method, the inside will be fully enclosed. I can show you this quickly. With a burrito method, the yolk, I don't know if you can see. The yolk there is fully enclosed on the inside um for the front and back. Um and because I didn't do the burrito method, my insides are just overlocked. Which isn't too bad it's still quite neat but i think you know to have an enclosed yoke would be nice as well um but i couldn't figure out how to do it so that's the only thing i did different with that everything is all still the same with the elastic i made it slightly looser uh because i just like that look a bit more and it's really really nice i really really like it i think it's sort of a casual top but more like a an elevated casual top casual blouse uh, that i can wear um for the summer months so i'm really happy about that so that's the technically third make I've made this this week, these past two weeks. The other thing that I've been busy with um, was we went to a wedding last weekend, a beautiful wedding in Oxford, where we stayed in a hotel um, for the two days of the wedding, before the wedding and after the wedding, which was really, really lovely. And my daughter's bridesmaid dresses, my um, daughters, my two older daughters were bridesmaids junior bridesmaids and then my younger daughter was a flower girl and these dresses I did not make these dresses but I had to alter them because they were really really long so this is just from that company Sheen Shane um, is really really inexpensive like 25 pounds I think so anyway uh, it was very very long and as you can see it's like a chiffon material um and i was really worried about cutting it i had to cut six inches of this one cutting it and hemming it because it's chiffon and um i'd never done that before and then i realized obviously that my overlocker has the option to do a three thread narrow hem i think it's called um and this is this is my so i'll show you what the original one looks like so the sleeves i haven't altered and this is what their hem looks like so it's just all you do in your overlocker, you just have to put um, different settings on it. If you look in your manual for your overlocker and if you look for a three thread narrow um, stitch and um, they will just give you the different settings of, for how you have to set your machine. And also it's only three threads. So you have to take one needle off and it's the left needle, I believe, that I took off and it created. So that's sorry, that's their one. And then the one that I did was pretty good I think and I was very very impressed um I'd never done it before and I've always shied away from chiffon because I thought well how are you going to sew that how are you going to hem that and so now I've tried that I'm very happy so my overlocker is just the Singer S1478 it was just the ones that you get from Lidl and I'm very happy that I can use it for another another task hemming hemming chiffon so that's that one that I did and then also my youngest daughter's flower girl dress I think this is from this was just from Amazon I believe and it's the same thing um the hem again beautiful three thread and narrow hem so I'm very happy that I was able to alter those two dresses and the hems looked exactly like they should like it was done by a professional which I'm not but it was done so that's everything that I've sewn I believe and then the other things I wanted to show you were sort of fabric hauls. It's not really a fabric haul. Well, I guess it is. Um, that I have um, purchased over the past couple of weeks. So the first thing is my Jenny Stitches um, project, my first one, has been submitted. And as I say, that's going to be revealed on the 12th of June. So then I was able to choose my next project and materials from Jenny. And what I've chosen to do is... Oh, no, I don't believe I have it. Oh, Cleo Pinafore. So, what I, so I'll show you the fabric first of all. So I have chosen this beautiful <clears throat> duck canvas. So it's a cotton, 100% cotton. You can, you can hear it. You can hear the structure of it. 
um let me just put that up <clears throat> and it's a beautiful duck egg blue background you can see the texture of the fabric there and it's a canvas so it's like a thicker sort of cotton uh, fabric and it's good for skirts trousers pinafores that sort of thing and then it's got like a lovely um what are these like dandelions and leaf pattern in white and beige so i am going to make the cleo pinafore i don't have it i am going to make the cleo pinafore with this one um, sorry, I don't have it. So it's the Tilly and the Buttons clear pinafore. I'll try and pop up a picture. Uh, and then underneath that, I am going to make um, the Anthea Allen blouse in a linen, be natural beige linen fabric. 100% linen, again, from Jenny Stitches. So I think together that looks quite nice. If I hold it up together. Come on. So just ties in nicely with that um and then obviously i get the um the notions for that as well so with regard to the blogger project it's just the cleo pinafore that i am doing for jenny um so i get all the materials for that uh, for free in return for an honest review and blog post and then the linen fabric uh, the anthe allen blouse i am going i'm making that for my own self um, but the fabric wasn't gifted although having said that when with jenny stitches are sort of agreement is that for every um project that we finish jenny that then gives us a 30 pound gift voucher from her shop which is amazing so this was purchased from the 30 pound gift voucher anyhow so i guess it's kind of from her as well and i also get the notion so that's the um buckle the dungaree clips for the pinafore and then the um the blue matching thread for the pinafore and then the contrasting top stitching thread so that's that. So I have about four weeks to finish that off um, and reveal that. And also, sorry, I got matching thread for the linen. So I've got four weeks to get that uh, sewn up and um, the blog post written and submitted to Jenny. And after which I'll get another £30 uh, to spend on gorgeous fabric, which is amazing. Um, what else did I get? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, um uh, mimi and b dawn from mimi and b so i interviewed dawn um on my channel i will um put a, a link to to her interview below later on uh, and she's so lovely um she was very nervous about her interview and she was um she was great though and her husband show makes an appearance as well in the interview and she was just so grateful that um i had decided to interview her and um basically where she was coming from she was sort of saying Oh, Crystal, you're doing, you know, all this work, you know, to promote my business, to help, you know, to help my business and, you know, to say thank you. Um, I'd like to give you a £25 gift voucher. And I was like, oh, wow, that is so generous, Dawn. And, but I did say to her, like, um, you know, you think that I'm helping you, but you're also helping me because um, she has more followers than me on Instagram. She doesn't have a YouTube channel, to be fair. But I think with, with what I'm doing and with what the sewing community is actually doing is it's, it's sort of, it's cross-advertising, it's cross promotions so I'm advertising her. She's also advertising me. And so we're helping each other. Uh, but I was super, super grateful that she um, that she gifted me that £25 gift voucher. And I also did a reel on Instagram opening that package. Um, and I'll show you the order that I made with her. Um, I bought some beautiful Liberty Lawn Cosmos Flower, I think this one's called. Um, and it's just a beautiful summer floral print from liberty of course liberty the quality is amazing the colors are vibrant and you'll know you're just buying beautiful fabric basically and the dress um the plans i have for this so i think i bought with the designer fabrics well with liberty anyway the width of the fabric is slightly narrower so you have to buy more um and i'm planning to make the anthea allen uh, dress but uh blouse blouse but in the dress version um so i've got enough of this fabric and basically i'm copying jen of um jen legs tees, tees creative i think she made an anna allen anthea dress in sort of a floral as well but i think she might might have chosen a lawn so it'd be more drapier so this is 100 percent cotton so it'll have a bit more structure so the sleeves will be a bit more poofier and so i got that from dawn and then the second thing i bought was a dashwood studio rayon they had this in two colorways um, and this is sort of a, a, a beautiful florals in a pink base and they also have it in like a greeny base as well 
so that's lovely and floaty and then my plans for this i should have prepared myself a bit more is the true bias shelby dress and I wanted to make the romper version. You can't really see it here. So you can have it as like a, a normal dress um, or you can have it as a romper. So basically these are like shorts here. But because the fabric, um, because the skirt is quite wide and the fabric is flowy, it almost looks like a dress. But when you pull your legs apart, that it's actually shorts there. So this is a lovely dress. I've not tried this before, but I love the fact that it has princess seams. I've not done a princess seam dress before button placket which i like sleeves v-neck and also the fact that you can um turn it into a romper but it still looks like a dress which is really nice so that's my plan for the dashwood studio rayon also um dawn also sent me some lovely freebies i think i have them here she also sent me some of her stationery which is really really cute actually mimi and b so that's their logo there um, and then that's their details there. And then she also sent me a matching. I don't know if you can see that. Mimi and B. Can you see it? Ah, oh, it's too light. Mimi and B. It's one of their blue pens. So that's really, really nice. Thank you, Dawn, if you're watching. And she does, Dawn does make an effort to watch my vlogs. And um, she also comments as well on Instagram as well, which is really lovely. So thank you very much, Dawn, for the lovely gifts and for the beautiful fabric and the £25 um, gift voucher. That was really amazing. The next thing I bought was, um, I don't know where this is from. Oh, no. I bought this from, ah, I'll, I'll, if I find it, I will link it down below. But it's basically a cotton poplin. But just the colourway was so gorgeous. It's just, um, I don't know if you can see. So it's like sage green and then reds and pinky flower, pink and white flowers. And I just think that looks, that almost looks well to me anyway. It looks like a Liberty, like a really expensive Liberty print. And it's just a cotton, so that will be crisp and really nice to iron and cut and sew. And my plans for that are is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra dress, but a short version with short sleeves, because I think the collar will stand up really well. Or the uh, Darling Rangers, uh, Megan Nielsen Darling Rangers dress. But I think it's going to be more, I think this one will be winning for that one. I mean, what do you guys think? This dress or this dress in that cotton poplin? Um, I just think it's a lovely fabric. I mean, look at that. It's so beautiful. Tell me what you guys think um, in the comments if you prefer one pattern to another. I believe this was from... It wasn't from So Much More because I bought something else from there. Not from So... I will link it down below if I remember where I bought that from. So that's that. What else did I want to talk to you about? Oh, okay. So... The other major thing that I have been busy with um, is uh, collecting, well, curating all the materials needed to make my daughter, my seven-year-old daughter, Anya, um, a First Holy Communion dress. Now, we already have a First Holy Communion dress that my two elder daughters have worn in the past. Um, but when I took it out from um, my wardrobe, it had a couple of stains on it. Um, and then when Anya wore it, it was okay. I mean, it was still a nice dress, but it, she just said... It was a bit itchy at the top because it was like a lacy top bit. Um, and then I just thought, well, I have to go and get it dry cleaned. So I thought, you know, why spend £10 getting a perfectly good dress dry cleaned when I can spend £120 making my own one? And, and that's what I've decided to do. So <laughs> I have decided to make my daughter her first Holy Communion dress. And the pattern I'm using is actually a very simple pattern. It's the... Um, I will pop up a picture. It's the Be Curious dress um, by Ellie and Mac. And I've made my daughter Anya a, um, a chambray version of this dress in the long sleeve and the skirt just below the knee. So for the first Holy Communion dress, I will make the short sleeves. It's just a round neck, simple bodice, short sleeves. And I will lengthen the skirt to floor length. Um, so I'm going to do... Oh, okay. I'm getting away myself. Um... What my plans were, I was going to buy some raw silk in white because I love the slub texture of the raw silk. So I was going to have a plain bodice, short sleeve in the raw silk, and sorry, and the skirt as well in the raw silk. And then for the skirt, I was going to overlay it with some tulle. Tulle? Tulle is American, right? Tulle. And um, that had beading and um, beading and, and sequins on it. And then a white ribbon, a white satin ribbon for the sash. 
don't have the ribbon anymore um okay so i ordered those um items and um i'll show you what i bought so this was bought from um so raw silk is obviously very expensive the best price i could get it for was on etsy it's called discover something but i will do a link below and i ordered their white raw silk and i think it was 18 pounds a meter so it is expensive um, and i bought two meters of this of this fabric and it's a beautiful i don't know if you can see it so it's 100 percent pure raw silks and you've got that slub there and this is their white but i don't know if you can see it's actually more ivory cream so i um sent them a message saying i think you've sent me the wrong color because i ordered white and this is definitely not white um and they said unfortunately their suppliers haven't been that good this year and they are in a couple of weeks ordering more white raw silk where the white is actually a real white but i said that's too late i need it now so they said i can return that fabric which is fine so i haven't returned it yet because i've been so busy so that's going to go back in the meantime i have ordered um I did try to look for other suppliers of raw silk in the white and they were either they were actually very expensive it was like 30 pounds a meter and I thought I'm not going to pay 30 pounds a meter for the raw silk so what I instead decided to do was buy some faux faux raw silk um, from eBay and I'll show you a couple of them here so the first one I got so this is a true white actually it doesn't look that white well it does this is a true white uh, and I know it's a raw it's a faux raw silk but this was just really really cheap looking so I will show you so I'm not sure which is the right side which is the wrong side but this is sort of the um the raw silk side uh, you know the raw silk texture in the white um, but then the other side is like a really shiny almost like a you know I don't know if you can see that it's just like got that shine to it which just looks really really cheap and tacky in my opinion and it's also quite um quite see-through as well you can see me it's quite see-through so that's one um fabric that i bought from ebay and i'm going to return that i did make sure that all of the places i bought from would accept returns because i am just buying them just to see if it's the suitable fabric and this is definitely is not because it is um just shiny and not very nice then i also bought another one from ebay so this is a better one this actually looks quite nice again it's a beautiful white not not an off-white like the other one was i don't know if you can see sort of the slub texture there so this is again a faux raw silk um and this one is actually quite nice so i might keep this one um what was i going to say um so for the foot so for the raw silk, as I said, that was £18 a metre and that was the cheapest I could find it online. For the faux raw silk, it was like £6 a metre, which is like such a big saving. Um, so I thought, you know what, I can't get the pure raw silk anyway in the white. So I have to get uh, faux raw silk and um, that's just great price and it doesn't, you can't even tell the difference, I think. Um, so that's that. Um, in the meantime, I also uh, thought um, I have some of this Dupion, Dupion satin or Dupion silk from Minerva, which I bought a while ago, and it just looks like a really lovely satiny, um, satiny fabric. What's the reverse like? And then the reverse is slight. It's got like a slub texture as well. And I remember this. Um, this is in my stash, and I remember that looking quite nice. And I thought, well. If I'm going to go the faux way anyway, I decided to buy this in white to, to compare that to the other two fabrics I've got. Then I've got three different fabrics to choose from um, and then I'll just decide and I'll have to cut it out. So that's arriving tomorrow, hopefully. I'll compare all those three fabrics together and then I'll just start um, making the dress. So that was the base. That was a dilemma with the base of the dress. Um, and I will show you. This is actually really beautiful. I will show you. The lace that I've chosen again I'll put a link sorry I'll put a link below for where I bought this lace I'm just holding this fabric out so you can see the lace um, nicely so it's basically tall and it's got beautiful beading and embroidery and it's got a double-sided scalloped edge let me just show you I don't know if you can see that uh, so that's the scallop edge, it's embroidered, it's got beautiful beading on it, um, little flowers there, leaves, and it's just really, really gorgeous. Um, and that was actually very expensive as well. Let's, sorry, 
my wires getting in the way so that was very expensive as well this was i believe 25 pounds a meter and i bought two meters um and i'll just show you without oh there you go I feel like I'm getting married now, like this is a veil. So that's that. So that's going to be the overlay on top of the faux silk skirt. And then the leftover I am going to use as a veil to cover, well, like a sort of um, coordinating veil. So that's that. And then I also bought some white satin ribbon for the waistband. Um, the first Holy Communion is on the 12th of June, so next Sunday. Uh, so I've got about seven days to make that dress. And I think I can get it done. It's, it's a fairly simple dress. It's just that the fabric is a bit more expensive than what I'm used to. Uh, but I think I can get that done in probably two or three evenings. So that's that. And then I can try and return all of these extra fabrics that I will not be using. Oh, and I also bought, sorry, some crinoline from the same place I got the Sea Queen Chul. It's basically a, like, um, like a thicker sort of netty... Um, all I suppose um, that I guess they use in bridal wear and occasion wear to stiffen um, to make the skirt go poofy so I've got two meters of that and I'm just going to do two layers of that under the raw silk faux raw silks to make the skirt poof out a bit um, and I think that is it in terms of fabric that I've bought um, the last thing I wanted to say was that thank you very much for the people that still are buying things from my D stash page um, which is uh, my social thread underscore D stash on Instagram. Um, yeah, so that's that's still going and people are still buying. So thank you very much. Um, I will be adding some patterns on there as well to D stash. And I will show you some of the patterns that I do have. Um, this is the Isla trench coat by Named Clothing. It has been opened just because I've read the booklet, but the pattern pieces are all intact. So that's that one. I have also the Rita shirt dress from Named Clothing that's going on there. Tilly and the Buttons Etta. All of these are unused. Tilly and the Buttons Etta. I've got another Tilly and the Buttons here somewhere. Ah, can't find it. Um, the Salida skirt by True Bias. This is a lovely um, panelled uh, panelled skirt. Um, and then I have... Um, a couple of patterns that have been used but they are uncut so they are still usable like the cashmerette appleton dress um i do have some simple so again these are all un unused and uncut uh what is this called the lena wrap dress by simple so the scarlet dress is like a peplum dress a scarlet dress by uh, simple simple so the Annabelle dress by Simple Sew. So all of these will be going on my D stash page at some point this week. I've got quite a few McCall's, Vogue. Um, I'll just show you a couple more. So wrap dresses, some lovely vintage style coats. Um, oh, this is a lovely one. I might keep that one. Hmm, I don't know. So this is just a jersey dress, but it has this lovely, I'll show you from this side this lovely sort of crossover panel at the waist, which I think is quite nice. Give you a lovely shaped waist. Um, another sort of vintage looking coat there by Vogue. Um, and loads more patterns. I think there's about 30 patterns that I'm going to put up there. Again, at bargain prices. Um, so please check that out. Um, the other thing that I got up to was um, my daughter had an exam again, and the exam center is in St. Neots in Cambridge, near Cambridge. And there's a lovely, I don't know if you've watched my previous vlog where I went to Backstitch, which is in Cambridge. And I just did a quick footage of what um, the shop and what I bought. And then uh, near St. Neots, there's also a fabric shop called Habby Days, H-A-B-B-Y-D-A-Y-S. And it's basically like a, um, like a warehouse. Um, and we went there whilst I was waiting for my daughter to finish her exams. And it's a lovely shop, so it's not like a glamorous shop or anything, but this is packed to the brim full of fabric. And I spoke to the lady. Oh, gosh, what's her name? Oh, if I remember her name, I'll post it below. And I spoke to her, and she was really, really lovely. Uh, and she basically said she is the biggest fabric shop in Cambridgeshire. Um, 
including Plush Addict, which is in Peterborough. But I think Plush Addict does a lot more. I think she said occasion wear or something. But never, nevertheless, they are the biggest in Cambridgeshire. So they have all the fabric bases. They have patterns, notions, um, lovely, lovely things. Um, and I was actually very, very good. The only thing I bought from there was a pattern. So they were doing a sale on their victory patterns and this is the Madeline skirt which I bought and I have seen this on Instagram before and basically it's a skirt but I just love this pocket detail and the little straps there and it looks perfect with a pussy bow blouse which I have the Anella blouse by um, Mood Fabrics which is a, um, a free pattern or you could use the Anthea Allen, the Anna Allen Anthea blouse as well to go under here and it's... um. That's the line drawing. So you've got these massive big pockets here, and then it's just these straps that cross over at the back, and it's a nice um, sort of flared out skirt. So that's the only thing I bought. It was posted as it was listed as fifteen pounds, and I think I got it for twelve pounds. So that's the only thing I bought. So I'm very very happy about that. And um, they had some lovely um, what is it called when it's um, for rainwear? Um, so it's fleece on the inside, and it's like um, waterproof on the outside. Ha! Huh. I can't remember it. Uh, and they also had a rail of sort of uh, samples that she had made, um, which is really, really lovely. And I will post, um, I did take a, a bit of footage at the shop, but my phone ran out of, of space, video space. So I will insert some photos and some video footage of that at the end of this, which is coming up very soon. <laughs> Don't you worry. And just to say, if you do like um, sort of um, shop tours, um, my sewing buddy Adele, so for Serenity, there's a quite a lot of um, shop tours as part of her channel so please do check her out i will link her youtube channel below um and i think that's it that's all i've done this week that's all i have to tell you just to say that um as i mentioned already at the beginning i will be doing my may makes a video um, around the 12th of June when my blog for Jenny Stitches comes out so I can reveal the dress that I did for that um, and also I will be doing my um, June plans video next week hopefully um, with all my plans um, for that um, next week also I will be receiving my Stitch and Ink box subscription box and hopefully my So Haley Jane subscription box so I will I will be doing some unboxing vlogs for you as well in the meantime um thank you very much for watching uh, if you do have any comments or if you have any uh, preferences in terms of the fabrics and the patterns that i have used please do comment below if you would like to reach out to me um on instagram please do direct message me at my social thread um if you are liking my content please do kindly like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and please check out my channel for my other content um and thank you so much for watching take care bye-bye oh i will now put on the <laughs> the footage that i um took at happy days thank you bye-bye so as you come in happy days they have all bits and pieces here i'm loving these sort of sew on iron on patches i mean have a look at those silk squares all little bits and pieces trims So all various bits and pieces, sewing, all that lovely machine up there. Also do sewing machines, magazines and patterns, cross stitch. Yes, Yenna? The red hot fashion. Cottons. Okay, my love. Cottons again, some lovely prints here. A bit of jersey. I think these are like chiffonies. That's a quite nice one. Trims again. Here they've got their sample rack. This is beautiful. It's a Tilly and the Buttons. I believe it's the Eden coat. But how nice is that? They've got a couple of made up garments here, which is nice to see. Patterns, a Jali, Thread Theory, Oliver and S. Grainline Studios, Tilly and the Buttons, so over it, Simplicity, New Look. Hmm, I think they collected a sewing handbook. That's cool. Oh, Victory Patterns. Some felt up there. Sewing machines. 
I've not seen this before. It's the Collect Sewing Handbook and it's similar to the Tilly and the Buttons one where it has sort of information about making the garment. Um, I think there's about five patterns and you get the pattern pieces at the back of the book. I think it's lovely. That's hardback like folder type style and that's £10. That's really nice. Over here. Oh, jerseys. That's lovely. Something made up in that jersey. All jerseys here. Flannels. That's a nice one. Jerseys. Some quilted fabric here. Jerseys again. French terries. Sweatshirtings. All the way up here. I think that's all stretchy. You've got some cords down here. Baby cords chunky cords, some lovely knits, um, what is this called, I can't remember, like fleecy jersey knits, cutting table, oh this is nice, viscosy, oh some cottons down here, ah, shoe making kits from Prim, I've not seen that before, Fat quarters, more cottons, haberdashery, more fat quarters, oh look, it's like the sale, sale selection, threads, we've got some wools here, tweed, that's lovely, look at that, they've got Melton, this is really nice, I'm liking this. Plain wool blends, pink and yellow, that kind of reminds me of um, Mr Blobby. Gingham, large ginghams, plain cottons, these are all cottons again, cotton ribbon at the top there, oh zebra. Children's prints, Batman, Superman. Disney, Hello Kitty, Star Wars, more Disney, uh, got more haberdashery, threads, threads, over here we have felt, we've got tools, look at that, bright colours, terry cloth, just got some lace down here, loads of things it's like treasure trove some lovely um soft shell here i'm particularly liking this so it's like a waterproof on the outside inside is a fleece back this lovely colorway here is really nice as well this one and that one they're gorgeous gorgeous what have we got down here more cottons and things i've sorry that one lovely canvases art gallery i didn't realize oh, no. beautiful more cottons all color coordinated oh lovely more cottons panel prints at the back Oh, keeps going. 